from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Roshan Lloyd de Souza. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from two donors. The first is Lidvina Duffy Chalian from Richmond, British Columbia, for the physical and spiritual health of family members and for world peace. The second is David Rosenfeld from Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina, in support of the Daily TV Mass. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And my brothers and sisters, today is the feast day of the conversion of St. Paul the Apostle. Saul became Paul. We too are called to work on those areas that has taken us away from the love of God and to come back to the Lord, to experience metanoia and conversion in our daily lives. And as we enter into this uh, celebration of the feast, let us seek God's mercy and ask the Lord to fill us with his grace and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for all of us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who taught the whole world through the preaching of the blessed Apostle Paul, draw us, we pray, nearer to you through the example of him whose conversion we celebrate today. And so make us witnesses to your truth in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul spoke to the people in Jerusalem. I am a Jew, born in Tarsus, in Cilicia, but brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, educated strictly according to our ancestral law, being zealous for God, just as you are, of, are today. I persecuted this way up to the point of death by binding both men and women and putting them in prison as the high priest and the whole council of elders can testify about me. From them, I also received letters to the brothers in Damascus, and I went there in order to bind those who were there and to bring them back to Jerusalem for punishment. While I was on my way and approaching Damascus, about noon, a great light from heaven suddenly shone about me. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, who are you, Lord? Then he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not hear the voice of the one who was speaking to me. I asked, what am I to do, Lord? The Lord said to me, get up and go to Damascus. There you will be told everything that has been assigned to you to do. 
Since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, those who were with me took my hand and led me to Damascus. A certain Ananias, who was a devout man according to the law and well spoken by all the Jews living there, came to me and standing beside me, he said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. And that very hour I regained my sight and saw him. Then Ananias said, The God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will, to see the righteous one and to hear his own voice. For you will be his witness to all the world of what you have seen and heard. And now, why do you delay? Get up, be baptized, and have your sins washed away, calling on his name. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you. Jesus said to the eleven, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they, ha they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A famous writer, Mark Twain, once said, few things are harder to put up with than the annoyance of a good example. Each of us is either a good example or a bad one. And like it or not, each of us is an example of some kind. I think there are a lot of people today who pretend to be something they are really not. They are playing a game 
they are putting on a show. But if you are a Christian, you may be the only Bible that many people ever read. They are not necessarily going to see what the scriptures have to say. However, they will watch you. They'll look at the way you live, the way you treat your family and friends, and the way you do your job. They'll look at the way you function as a follower of Jesus Christ and make their evaluation about God accordingly. And today on this feast day of the conversion of St. Paul, St. Paul has beautiful things to say. The Apostle Paul wrote to the believers in Corinth, the only letter of recommendation we need you yourselves. Your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. St. Paul writes to Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2. And he writes to Philippians, Paul gave us one of the most concise, perfect summaries of the Christian life, which shows us how important a good example really is. He wrote, work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. There was a very special bond between the Apostle Paul and the believers in this particular church. He loved them and they loved him. When Paul wrote this letter, they were in great agony over the fact that he was in prison and couldn't be with them. Paul was essentially telling them, I don't want you to lower your God spiritually, even if I am not around. I don't want you to go into some kind of spiritual cruise control and not continue to move forward. You need to keep walking with the Lord. This reminds me of an old poem that says, you are writing a gospel, a chapter each day. By the deeds you do, the words that you say. Men read what you write, whether faithful or true. Just what is the gospel according to you? Some people are interested in the things of God when they are around committed Christians. But if they are not around believers, they are quickly pulled in the world's direction. That's because they don't have their own foundation in the Lord. Their relationship with God is contingent on someone else's relationship with God. We see this illustrated in the book of Genesis with Abraham and his nephew Lot. Abraham had a strong faith and walked closely with the Lord. His nephew, Lord, however, was sort of a spiritual freeloader. You might say that Abraham walked with God, but Lot walked with Abraham. When Lot was around Uncle Abraham, he was strong in the faith and interested in the things of God. But when he got away from his uncle, he was drawn to the ways of the world. Lord's problem was that he didn't have his own relationship with God. The same was true of the children of Israel who turned to full tilt idolatry when Moses was absent. What kind of example are you? What kind of influence do you have right now? Paul was telling the believers in Corinth to not only be good example and good people, but also to give the reason for doing what they did. There are a lot of Christians who will live the life and God bless every one of them, but they won't speak up for their faith. 
Then there are others who will speak up for their faith, but they won't live the life. And in the latter situation, I wish they would be quiet. Even when we don't feel like it, we need to do the right thing. And people need to know the reason for it. What a powerful witness it is when we have earned the right to preach the gospel by living godly lives. That's the importance of a good example. Today, Jesus speaks those same words to us. He also calls us to proclaim the good news to everyone we meet. We may do it through our words and our actions. Maybe our care and attention to individuals will heal them of their loneliness. Perhaps by noticing the individual and engaging in conversation with them, their demon may no longer have such great power over them. Today, Jesus calls us to proclaim the good news. Will we answer this call? Amen. Let us bring forward our prayers to our loving God. Let us pray for all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. In a month dedicated to the holy name of Jesus, we pray as a community of faith that his name will bring peace and reconciliation to our families and the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the sick and suffering and those who have requested our prayers, for them we pray to the Lord. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the, the praise and glory of his name, name for our good, good and good of all this holy church. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, we pray, may the Spirit fill us with that light of faith with which the, he constantly enlightened the blessed Apostle Paul for the spreading of your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Is he who comes in the name? 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Francis Leo our Bishop, all the religious clergy, and the faithful. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. With the body of Christ brings up. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, stir up in us that fire of charity with which the blessed Apostle Paul burned ardently as he bore his concern for all the churches through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Amen. with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the love of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.